Welcome guys to another tablet review and you're probably thinking, dang Lauren, another one? And yes, so here we are. Today I will be reviewing Artisol's SP1603 tablet, which has 15.6 inches of workspace. So upon unboxing it, it was nice to see that everything was packaged nicely and safely and here is everything that was in the box. The tablet comes with a pen case, a pen holder, and one pen. It has, of course, the manuals, a glove, and a wiper, and all the cords that you need to connect it to your computer, as well as a power adapter. It also comes with a tablet stand. So opening this manual package, this is where the nibs are, and they give you 30 nibs for some reason, which is really impressive because Usually tablets that come with one pen only like at max have uh, 20 nibs, but you know, Artisol just decided to give us 30, I guess, which is very, very nice. The pen model is very nice and also very typical of pen tablet pens. And it has this like cool pattern on the bottom half of the pen. I was really impressed with the tablet's design because it just it just looks so like futuristic and cool. It's honestly the first tablet that I've reviewed that just makes me want to use the buttons solely because of the design. All these buttons are pressable. It has so many buttons. Even the scroll wheel is pressable. And so you have a lot of options in setting your hotkey. So the tablet did come with like the peel thing and I was so excited to peel it because my last tablet review, I it didn't have a peel uh, film, but I think I peeled it off too fast. And so the residue of the film uh, stayed on the tablet screen and I had to like scrub it off. Well, not scrub it. I just used my fingers, but luckily it didn't damage the screen at all. So. If you get this and you're peeling the film off, um, don't get too excited like me and do it slowly or else the residue will stay on the tablet. So first things first, plugging it into my computer, I was kind of bothered that I had to use both cords and I hate using two cords. And I not only had to use two cords, but they're also pretty short. And with my setup, it's kind of difficult to reach it in a in a comfortable way, which doesn't make me anxious that it's like pulling on the cords too much. And so I really wish these cords were longer. Also, because the cords are short, it's a bit difficult to move it around in my setup. So because of this reason, I won't be using it as a second monitor. But I did use the tablet all day. I drew on it all day and I didn't run into any heat problems. So if you're wanting a tablet that you can use as a second monitor, I don't know if this one would be the best because of the cord uh, length. But honestly, overall, a really great tablet. I didn't notice anything weird with a screen or pen pressure once I booted it up and started using it. The tilt does feel slightly more sensitive than what I'm used to, but that's nothing that I can't just adjust to over time. And the colors are also pretty darn accurate. It's actually more closely accurate to my monitor than my trusty XP Pen 15.6. So um, that is really nice. Calibration was really easy. And I think what it's called the pen parallax, like how accurate the pen is with the screen is also really well done. Now, my main gripe with this tablet and what is preventing me from using it as my main tablet for a couple of months is the drivers. So downloading drivers themselves was really quick and easy, but the problem was within the drivers itself. The drivers was telling me that my pen pressure wasn't working. And so after 30 minutes of trying to figure out what went wrong in the installation, I finally just tested it out in Eclipse Studio Paint and the pen was working fine. Yeah, I know I should have tested it to begin with, but I trusted what the drivers were telling me. You know, it was telling me that the pen wasn't working because in the drivers, there's usually this bar that goes up and down depending on how much pressure you are applying to the pen and that bar was not going up and down. But in reality, the pen works fine. It's just the drivers that need some work. 
And also, the tablet's screen settings do not save with each session. And what I mean by this is that if you go in and edit the brightness or the colors of your screen, the next time you use the tablet, you're gonna have to do all those settings again because they just change back to the default settings every time the tablet restarts. And so that can definitely get annoying having to do that every single time you use your tablet. And so Artisol really needs to work on fixing these problems within their drivers because this is a really great tablet. It's just the drivers suck. Sorry. You know, these problems aren't breaking anything or preventing the tablet from having good performance, but these are, you know, quality of life things that should be updated every now and then and improved in the drivers. And no one wants to have to adjust their brightness and color preferences every time they turn on their tablet. So Artisol, you know, Im improve this thing about the drivers and I promise you people will be happy with it. It'll be like a breath of fresh air. Like, yes, I don't have to keep doing this every time I turn my tablet on. So in conclusion, um, I really, really like this tablet. And honestly, I would use it as my main tablet for a couple of months, like I did with uh, the Canvas 13, if the drivers weren't so annoying to deal with. I didn't run into any problems while drawing and it's on par, if not better than the 15.6 tablets that I've tried. And it's honestly pretty affordable at $250 for a tablet of this size. I also just wish the cords were longer, but you know, aside from those problems that are outside the actual performance of the tablet, I really, really, really like this tablet. I love that the colors are accurate to my screen and I love that there's nothing wrong with the pen pressure. And you know, I, I don't want to have to rearrange my entire setup just to accommodate the short cords, so won't be using it as my main one. But in the future, I will probably try to see if the longer cords that I got from other tablets will work with this one. And hopefully they do, because then that means I can use this tablet as my main one. But yeah, that is it for the review section of this video. Thank you, thank you Artisol for sponsoring me. And you can improve the drivers. Artisol, I believe in you. I really, really hope that you do in the future because it'll just improve the quality of these tablets even more. So once again, thank you. Now let's get to the drawing part of this video. Okay, so this video is a long one and I'm just hoping that I can get through this without my mind going blank, okay? So I'm gonna start this off by talking about this character that I am drawing. So this is actually kind of a redraw because this is a redraw of a portrait that I did before that was like very, very different style than I do now. Oh, there's a plane outside. Sorry if you can hear that. Okay. So this is of my character who is named uh, Sunny, spelled with an O instead of a U. So it's S-O-N-N-Y and her nickname is So or S-O. And the story behind her design is actually... Um, there is this like 10k point redeem on my Twitch channel that allows chat to design a character with me. And when I first introduced that, um, that was when I was still fairly streaming semi-regularly on stream. And so I kind of had like a chat of around like 10 or 15 people that would come and hang out. And, um, they all helped me design this character and she just turned into this vampire and I might show this uh, the original design up on screen and you know it, it's supposed to be just like a really casual or kind of like a joke design it was meant to be a joke but then I ended up like really liking her and she's supposed to be a vampire who really likes the sun, which is why in the original design she has a an umbrella is because 
um, she still likes to be able to walk out in the daytime and her character has really evolved in the last like three or four years and I have since then turned her into a character who is supposed to be included into my story about aliens. So if you didn't know, I have this uh, story slash webtoon in the works that I created my characters, Sydney, Jules, Zabella, and Jasper for. And it's supposed to be inspired kind of by like Vampire Diaries, Percy Jackson, Teen Wolf. Like basically all those shows that are meant to be um, these teenagers or young adults having some sort of supernatural or magical or fantasy aspect to them that they are trying to hide from the real world. And all the while they're trying to live normal lives, but then things about the fantasy world or magic keep, keeps interrupting their, you know, young lives and creating problems for them. And I wanted to make something like that. It actually started out as an alien like boarding school where, you know, they would go to a school and they would have dorms and it's this school that hides under the facade of just being a very expensive and like special boarding school. But in reality, it's actually um, some place where aliens from like a different planet can come and congregate together and just be aliens together. And they like train kind of like X-Men, you know, and I switched that to becoming just almost like a slice of life college thing where they're also aliens and the thing about that story is i want my aliens to be very very colorful think like i don't know like guardians of the galaxy aliens where they all have different like neon skin colors like green pink red blue or um you know what's funny is actually sydney's version of her alien form almost looks exactly like Doja Cat's alien in one of her music videos. I forgot the title, but I saw that music video after I'd already designed Sydney's alien form. And I was like, wait, <laughs> like this is weird. Like that's exactly how I want her to look. But anyway, the, the premise of the story is supposed to be that there's these uh, college uh, students who live almost in like a fraternity house that's supposed to be co-ed there's like a group of maybe five or seven of them and jules and isabella and jasper are all part of that and sydney is the main character she believes she is human and the lore is supposed to be that she's the the first and only half alien half human everyone else is either full human or full alien and you know uh they drink like this potion that camouflages them into a human form. That's why when, you know, the, the characters that I draw, they all look like humans, even though I neglect their alien forms. It's not all fleshed out, but Sunny, she's this very colorful character. She, you know, she started out as a vampire and I wanted to include her in this story. So technically she's not a vampire anymore. Okay. I, I mean, I still drew her with fangs, but that part of her or aspect of her character has changed and I want her to be kind of like the crazy rambunctious obnoxious alien who is has like maybe she's just arrived on earth and so she's really new to the culture of like hiding that you're an alien so she's very quirky and weird in that regard very extroverted and Maybe the others are kind of just like, yo, like, Sunny, you need to, like, you need to dim it down a bit. Like, we're supposed to hide that we're aliens. We're not supposed to tell everyone, you know, but obviously, like, no one believes her because, like, who's going to believe someone who, you know, tells them that they're an alien? But anyway, I haven't come up with her alien form yet. This is her human form. And I don't know, I might make it like a gag or a joke that, like, her human form and her alien form literally just look the same because she already looks pretty um, non-conventional for a human with the red ombre hair. You know, she she is definitely a character, <laughs> but I'm sorry if I just went on a tangent and rambled and none of that makes sense because um, 
I just talked about my story for a little bit there, but um, it sounds like it's something that I've been working on for a while, but in reality, I worked on it a little bit for a couple months in like maybe 2021 when I created, or 2020, I forget, but um, when I created Sydney, Jules, and Sabella, and Jasper, that is really the extent of how much I've worked on the webtoon because I haven't actually drawn anything from it aside from designing the characters and uh, some of the imposter syndrome caught up to me where I felt like because of my inexperience in storytelling illustration, I, I didn't have a lot of confidence in my ability to you know, draw a comic because I, I don't normally draw comics or webtoons. I really only draw characters. I don't even draw backgrounds. And so, I don't know, it's, it's difficult for me to gain that confidence again to create why, what I want to create. And I took a break from it and that break has like, you know, ex extended into a couple of years now. And now I'm pretty unsure what I want to do with these characters and the story that I have planned. I don't know if I want to make a webtoon anymore. And I, I want to look into game design and I'm probably going to go into studying that in my college. And maybe, maybe I can turn it into a game, like a visual novel type game, but who knows, you know? Um, th these are all just ideas, it's just talk of what I might do, it's not what I'm actually going to do. So don't count on anything that I'm saying right now. But um, one thing's for sure is that I will always draw these characters and I will treasure them in my heart. So that is Sunny, guys, or so. Um, hope you enjoy seeing some of her old art here and I hope to draw her more because really I, I don't draw her that much. This is the first time I've drawn her in, in a couple of years. So last night, I actually watched Puss in Boots 2 for the first time because it finally came out in HD online and I bought it for like $30, which I think will be worth it in the end because I'm probably going to go back and watch it again if I ever do get into uh, 3D animating. And literally the first minute of the movie, uh, the wishing star falling, I got goosebumps just from seeing the animation of when it hit the earth because that that was amazing and you know it's kind of like a trademark of the spider-verse style is the vfx of like explosions and the action stuff like when um when someone was tap dancing or dancing on the floor or even just jumping they would have those like movement lines or I don't know what they're called um, but they would have like these, just these extra things that you would normally kind of see in comics um, appear in the animation and it's so so cool and it was honestly kind of hard at times to focus on what was going on in the story because I was so focused on admiring the animation it's definitely a movie that's like warrants multiple watches you know for the first the first time you watch, enjoy the story. Second time you watch, just try to digest all the animations. Third time, try to learn from the animation. And the colors are so nice. And it just, it just really motivated me to try to start learning 3D modeling. But thinking about it now, the, the obstacle that I feel like I will run into is that I will once again just get stuck in my comfort zone 
of like drawing women or drawing only characters and not backgrounds and i'm kind of scared it's, it's scary because you know 3d is all out of my element and animation too i've never animated anything and so um watching this movie and getting motivated it is just it's just motivation and inspiration it's not action yet and and now i fit i'm a bit afraid to take that action because i'm just like am i good enough for it you know it's that that imposter syndrome creeping up on me and i'm actually in a class um it's a 3d animation one i think or intro to 3d animation computer animation i think it's what it's called and um it's only been one week you know we only met two times and as i'm sitting there and we opened up Maya and I'm like, oh, like this is overwhelming, you know, because I just, I just really feel like I might not be good enough for it. That's the, that's the fear there. And even though deep inside, I know that if I put my mind to it, I can learn these things and I can reach a point where I am, you know, satisfied with my work and happy with my work but i i hope that 3d vibes with me because it might not you know but i hope it does because it would be really cool to see my characters uh in 3d model style it would be really cool to see them animated and if i'm not interested in doing a webtoon for my story maybe i could make and add, like you know like a show or just something to bring it to life because i've mentioned before i'm not sure how much i want to be included in the industry now i don't know if i really want to work with someone else with my, as my boss um i just really like being my own boss and so the more skills that i can acquire to become self-sufficient in in this like industry i guess and of content creation where i can make my own game i can make my own webtoon i can make my own animations and that would be really cool because i i don't need someone to be giving me the okays for like projects or people telling me what to do because um because to be completely honest i've never had a job outside of being self-employed and it, it scares me and i'm just like oh, what if i get into that industry and I hate it or I'm not cut out for it and so I'm just kind of um depending on myself a little bit but you know that's always a plan b is to just make a resume make a portfolio and get into the industry if I'm good enough for it and speaking of making a portfolio and a resume that was my first assignment for my animation class and <laughs> I got roasted well I didn't get roasted okay it was it was nothing of that sort it wasn't negative but um my professor spent like an entire zoom class going over everyone's uh, resume and portfolio and i was so nervous for her to get to mine and the crazy thing is she almost forgot mine and i had to like speak up at the end of class i, I was the last one that she checked out um and i was like oh like, professor you didn't look at mine and um she looked at it and I, I wasn't, I didn't know what to expect because I had never really put my art out there and like actually confidently showed a professor my portfolio because I've always been afraid of what their response to digital art might be. But because this is an animation class, you know, prof animation professors are always going to be open to digital art because that's the primary way that animation is being done these days. And so... She wasn't surprised at all uh, at like what I do and it wasn't necessarily like impressed either. And um, she told me that I need to draw men more <laughs> and I need to be more diverse with the characters I draw. And uh, I'm not sure what she meant by that uh, because I do feel like I have uh, like, I don't just draw pale people, so she probably didn't mean it that way, but maybe she meant, like, different body types and uh, more genders, because I really do just draw feminine people, 
but it was kind of um it was an eye-opening experience uh you know to say the least where i kind of really just realized in that moment how stuck i have been in my comfort zone because you know if i ever do want to get into the industry and okay let's not go that big if i even want to go forward with this story that i'm making i need to be able to draw guys i need to be able to draw masculine characters and i haven't been challenging myself to do that which is going to be a goal for 2023 is that i want to challenge myself to really learn a lot more things i don't know how interested i will be in animation but Hopefully that class will let me know. And I, I really do want to learn 3D modeling. It's just like, it's just that my brain is kind of overloaded and overwhelmed with suddenly all these things that I want to learn. As I want to learn how to draw men. I want to learn how to 3D model. And I want to get better at drawing backgrounds. And you know, none of that happens overnight. And it, it, that's a downfall of being self-taught is that I don't know where to start. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of overwhelming. I guess I am just beating myself up here, but you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is something that a lot of people can relate to is this, this feeling that you're actually not as good as you thought you were. You know, like I thought I could get away with just drawing feminine characters and make a living off of that but in reality guys i don't know how sustainable this is that what i'm doing and it's working now but who knows if it'll work next year right and so i really need to have these things that i can uh, fall back on and with that said i gosh i just keep adding to the things i want to do um i also want to get into drawing fan art of historical romance because I've talked about this before. I really like historical romance and I'm appalled by the lack of art for it. And by art, I mean like art that is separate from the book covers. And that's also one reason why I want to improve on drawing men is because I can't draw historical romance fan art like in the way that I want if I'm only drawing the girls, you know? And so I guess that is a, also a goal and I've been inspired to do that because I'm not sure if you guys know Mithena, the artist Mithena. I love, love, love her art. She does a lot of Disney princess fan art and she also does a bit of like period art, like historical romance period romance art. Um, where she has her own characters that she has made that are set kind of like in a fantasy period thing. And recently she has gotten into drawing Narnia fan art and all of it looks so nice. And, um, you know, and I assume it's something that she was just really into at the time. She just went and drew fan art for it. And so I, I just want to really get into doing fan art. And I know it's not my thing, but I, I want to get better at capturing characters' likeness, and so, yeah, I want to do more fan art, and I'm not sure if I should start with historical romance, or if I should try finding, like, an obscure fandom thing that I am into that doesn't have a lot of fan art also, but I, I'm, don't, I haven't been consuming a lot of media lately other than historical romance i have been watching downton abbey i actually finished the entire franchise of downton abbey i watched all six seasons and both movies maybe i could do downton abbey fan art like i don't know and i mean technically that is also period romance historical romance it's in the 1920s so it counts you know what maybe i will maybe i will do that but um now that we're on the topic of downton abbey and i have around uh, 10 more minutes to go to, to keep on talking. Downton Abbey was a journey. I don't know how many of you have even touched Downton. Maybe you don't even know what it is, but um, 
I have been into historical stuff for a long time. You know, ever since I first laid eyes on Pride and Prejudice in my freshman year of high school, I have been consuming like movies. Uh, I watched The Young Victoria a bit ago too, and I really, really enjoyed that because the costume design was amazing. And I, I want to rewatch the live action Cinderella with Lily James because that is also known for its amazing, amazing costume designs. I mean, just the dress, you know? And so I've heard all these things about Downton Abbey. I've watched a few clips. So there were some things that were already spoiled for me, but I have never actually given this show a chance um, past season, not, not past season one, past episode one. And so I finally just decided to watch it and yeah it was a journey so downtown abbey is this show about the lives of the upper class peerage of um england in yorkshire or york and it also shows the servant's life and you know that's the most interesting aspect of it is the lives of the servants because the servants don't really get a spotlight most of the time and it is crazy and insane how many characters die in this show, okay? But um, there's three sisters who are like rich and pampered, Mary, Edith, and Sybil. Everyone's favorite is Sybil because she's the nicest. And to be completely honest, I despise Edith and Mary because they're like these two sisters that are just like at it with each other they're constantly fighting edith i guess you could say is like the neglected ugly sister even though she's not ugly but they treat her like she is um who isn't expected to ever get a guy to like her and mary is the like the pretty eldest sister who gets everything every man falls in love with her for some reason even though she is nasty like her personality is nasty and um throughout the entire show these two sisters are just jabbing at each other they're fighting and you know i was kind of expecting edith to be a bit nicer because she she is the trope of that like ugly sister once again even though she's not ugly but um usually those characters they have a reason for you to like them or to sympathize with them. But Edith, she, she the things she does just annoyed me. But I really enjoyed the show because, you know, these these characters feel real. And I like how, in some regard, I like how Edith didn't just completely fit the blueprint of the ugly neglected sister. Sorry, I keep using ugly. But um, and, and I like how she had a lot of layers to her. Um, there, there are some problems with the show, but ignoring those, you know, it was a really enjoyable thing and the character development in it is really good. And so maybe I will look into drawing fan art for that. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how sure I am in, in doing that, but. So I'm going to quickly switch to the topic of animation again and learning 3D stuff. And um, so currently I am in two animation classes. I am in computer animation and I am in 2D or not 2D and I am in animation one. And so uh, in a nutshell, in computer animation, I'm going to be learning how to 3D model in Maya and eventually animate uh, in Maya. And in my animation class, I'm primarily going to be 2D animating using Storybook Pro or Storyboard Pro, I forget like what the, uh, the program is actually called. And um, I'm really interested to see if I am 
like more compatible with 2D animation or 3D animation. And I assume, you know, 2D animation is going to be easier for me because I'm already used to working in a 2D medium. But 3D sounds really fun and it sounds like it just there's just so many things you can do with it, you know, and you could go with it in a, in a direction because you're like, oh, I could do TV shows with this. I could do video games with this. And I feel like nowadays 2D animation has really only been dedicated for shows. Um, uh, there's like, you know, the game industry isn't too saturated with 2D games. Um, at least like outside of like platformers or like things like Stardew Valley or whatever, you know. And with 3D, as I was watching Puss in Boots, I was just like wondering, like, how did they animate all Puss's fur? Or like how, like, I just like, I couldn't fathom it, you know, I was like, there's that pipe over there. Is there just one person like modeling every single pipe in this movie? Is there another person texturing every single piece of wood in this movie? And then there's another person um, like lighting these three seconds. And there's another person lighting the next three seconds. Like I just, I can't wrap my head around it, you know? And I'm like, all these things I wonder, like, how do they do the water physics? How do they animate the hair and the fur? How do they do the, the gravity? How do they do, um, like, model collision? Uh, how do they do the frame rate? And I'm just, like, worried that I'm not going to learn any of that in my classes, you know? My expectations out of art classes has been low in recent years because, I, I, you know, I have these expectations going in where I'm like, oh, I should learn this in this class, right? And then I don't. And so I've just been disappointed with the art classes that I've been in. And so I really hope that I learn what I want to learn from these classes about animation. And if I don't, I could find it online because there is like, I remember when I first started to get into 3D modeling. It was because of the game Hades, and I saw on Twitter the behind the scenes of the person who 3D modeled the game, and these 3D models look 2D. And I'm just like, how did they do that? Like, how did they add lines to the textures to make it look 2D? From every angle, it looks 2D. And so I was like on YouTube, and I was searching up like, how do you on on Blender? How do you make or add like 2d type textures or like um wolf among us and telltale games they have these like lines on their faces and the models which invokes a 2d style and i'm just like i want to do that and um i couldn't figure it out and it's also pretty difficult to digest anything in tutorials as like a hardcore beginner because you know, I'll watch one video about texturing and the person doing the tutorial already thinks that I know every shortcut and every, you know, like, and I'm like, I barely even know how to move the camera and, and rotate these, this object. And so it's pretty overwhelming because um, sometimes these tutorials on how to do the basics don't touch up on the basics of the basics and so I just get lost and I'm really out of my element with this because it, it's been a while since the last time I actually sat down and really learned something about art because I've just been doing the same thing for years and you know and I think this year is really going to be a wake-up call and I hope that I can share my journey in how I learned these things with you guys and hopefully it could help some of you and um, hopefully in the future I could also share some resources on how I did some stuff but yeah it's all daunting also really exciting you know last year I had thoughts about starting a small business and a sticker business 
and now I am having thoughts about learning how to 3D model and you know hopefully hopefully it all works out because in the end I really just want to be financially stable right <laughs> and that's what everyone wants is to be financially stable so that we could do anything we want comfortably and it would be really nice to just chillax in life and not have to rely on an industry salary and just be like self-made you know that that would be really nice and so um i'm gonna end the video on that note and just you know let's hope for the best everyone hope for the best for their own futures and if you're an artist uh how about challenge yourself to learn something that you've been avoiding like i've been avoiding men or okay that sounded weird but i've been avoiding drawing men so if, maybe if you're like me you know let's start together this year and let's practice drawing men maybe you've been avoiding drawing hands you know let's just it'll be a year of learning let's say that and hope for the best for all of us and everyone so yeah thank you thank you everyone for watching this and thank you artistful for sponsoring this video once again and um hope you've enjoyed listening to this hope you've enjoyed watching and i will also say right now because i almost forgot to say this um this art piece will be available as a print in my next shop update so look forward to that and I will, you know, advertise it in a video probably. So yeah, once again, thank you. Um, like or subscribe if you want. You don't really have to. It doesn't really matter to me. But um, yeah, see you in the next video. Goodbye.